Je vais maintenant vous parler de, de Sevinch Osman Kizi, d'Azerbaïdjan. Elle a perdu son, son père dans les années 90. Elle va nous expliquer un peu dans, dans quelles circonstances, euh, rapidement, si tu veux bien, euh, Sevinch. Euh, et euh, j'aurais une question importante à, à poser euh, à Sevinch, c'est quelles sont les étapes par lesquelles elle est passée pour, pour, pour sa reconstruction et quel était ce processus de reconstruction Well, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, we're a completely new organization. In, as a matter of fact, we're still in the process of establishment, and it's an honor to be here. And I want to thank you personally. Uh, we met a couple of months ago in Baku, in Azerbaijan, and I have to say, it was really an eye-opening experience to learn so many things and how much you've achieved in doing so many things for victims and families of 1989 crash. There are so many similarities for me between that crash and the uh, crash of helicopter, shoot down of helicopter in 1991 in Azerbaijan that uh, took, uh, my, uh, took away my, my father's life. My father was a press spokesman of president of Azerbaijan and that day he was flying uh, together with other officials of, uh, and peace mediators from Russia and Kazakhstan to a region, to Azerbaijan's region called Nagorno-Karabakh when their helicopter was shut down and everyone in this helicopter, including my father, was killed. Me, myself, uh, I was, I just started uh, to work at news station back then. I was working at news department and ironically, I learned, I found out about the news that my father was killed from the news program. What followed, what followed that was basically a very long uh, process of recovery when, when I could speak and write about probably everything but that tragedy. And it took me years to understand that probably there is no better journalist who can do something about that event, and that's when I started doing a documentary, an investigation that found out a number of interesting facts, and one of them was that that peace mission was actually killed only four days before the peace agreement was about to be signed between Azerbaijan and Armenia. This is only one of the facts that we were able to find out. But of course, it was my personal story too. It was about my father. It was a daughter's investigation of the events. And I find this as a relief, probably a very small, very minor relief, that I could, was able to do something uh, for my father and for all the victims that were killed in 1991 in Nagorno-Karabakh. Vous êtes une, une journaliste reconnue euh, sur le plan international avec une expérience dans plusieurs pays. Est-ce que justement cette expérience internationale pourrait aider les victimes du terrorisme en Azerbaïdjan Well, my, my experience is that uh, certain hints probably can help all victims of terrorism everywhere in the world. And I feel that I've been to both sides of barricade. Probably my colleague has the same feeling, who's also a journalist. When you're a victim yourself on one side, but you're also a journalist. And I get to see a lot of people who come, you know, with, to television with photos or documents. They try, they're asking you, can you please do something to sort of do something for the memory of our beloved ones? Unfortunately, this is not how it works in news media. And it's probably useful for everyone to know that a couple of things. First of all, there is something that we can help as victims of terror ourselves to help the journalist to find the story, to see the story, because the role of media is really cannot be overestimated. I and mean, media can <coughs> kill the potentially good story by its before its ignorance or misjudgment. Media can make wonder probably in a matter of days or even hours. So that's why it's important to work with journalists, for instance, to show the story in development. There can be no development at all. For instance, the case can be closed with no results. That is also news. Or always beware of commemoration, always be aware of anniversaries, of dates. For instance, I did a story for CNN about a journalist that was killed 18 years ago. And you would say, journalists get killed 
Nowadays, too, why to run a story about someone, an event that happened 18 years ago? The answer is simple, because his, what would have been 50th year anniversary was coming up. So here we go. There's an angle to remember the person, but also to tell the story, to tell the events that took that person's life. So I think victims of terror should be aware of that and help journalists. The other thing is that I find that victims of terror sometimes are ashamed of their emotions. I also was ashamed of my emotions, and this is wrong. Uh, media likes emotions, media likes passion, and, and this passion is natural, it comes from our hearts. And we're not here to play, to, to pretend to be objective, we never will be objective, and we shouldn't be objective, we lost our loved ones. So let the world know this, and let our personal stories stop the world, or stop the further killings of people. So, and the other thing is that take every opportunity to tell the story. There is no good venue or bad venue. Every venue is good when you use it to tell the story. Thank you. Lia Savic, cher Savic, comment voyez-vous les activités Comment voyez-vous les, les activités futures de l'association des détenus terroristes en Azerbaïdjan qui vient juste d'être créée Quels sont vos prochains objectifs well, I'm learning here. I'm new. I'm learning from you. I'm learning from you. I'm learning definitely from you. And <laughs> and I think I will be. Of course, I, I think the most immediate things we should be doing is to get the status of victims recognized, to think about how we, what we can do for the memories of the victims. Enough being ashamed to come out and tell your story, tell people know what happened, what we feel about this. And I think I will be a happy person if I get things done, if I do what probably you did, <laughs> half of what you did, but next year when we come here. Hopefully, I'm hoping. Thank you, merci beaucoup. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 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 Th